Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I just thank uh, Neve and Ida and all the, the youth defense folks who have worked so hard on this campaign and in bringing us over to help them. Uh, I'm going to talk science, but what I want to do is explain the science of stem cells, not only so you can understand it, but I want you to be able to pass it on. You need to tell everyone else about this because most people just don't understand. You know, think about the usual stories you see in the media. They'll say just stem cell, and you'll hear about the wonderful uh, cures that may come from stem cells. Now, they're talking usually there about embryonic stem cells, and they won't, as Neve mentioned, talk about the real successes of adult stem cells. In my own country, the politicians have done this quite a bit in terms of hype in their phrases. For example, U.S. Senator Arlen Specter has said embryonic stem cells are a fountain of youth and they have the potential to cure all known maladies based on no evidence. And in fact, when he said all known maladies, I started thinking, well, what about something like dandruff, bad breath, or for Senator Specter, demagoguery? But Speaker of our House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, maybe takes the cake with this phrase where she said, science has taken us to a place that is biblical on its power to cure, and that is embryonic stem cell research. Well, really, that's just the wolf in sheep's clothing that they're bringing to it. Let's talk about some real facts here. When we talk about using stem cells to treat disease or injury, it's something like this, what we now term regenerative medicine. So if I have a heart attack, usually the whole, whole organ doesn't go down, but parts of that muscle are damaged. And the idea then would be to take stem cells, in this case, adult stem cells from bone marrow, inject them into the damaged part of the heart and repair or replace that damaged tissue. Any stem cell we talk about has two chief characteristics. Number one, the little circular arrow, they keep growing and dividing, so you've always got some of these stem cells available. And that's true whether they're in the lab dish or in your body. And then number two, if you give a stem cell the right signal, moving over here to the right, they'll specialize into any of these various tissues. So they're responding to a specific signal to repair and become other tissue. And there are different sources for stem cells. Now down here, we start all as a single-celled embryo at conception. And after about five to seven days, we look like this. We don't look like we look now, but that's how we all looked at that point in our life. We were an embryo, and that's how an embryo looks, a human embryo at that point in time. And it's the cells inside here that are the embryonic stem cells. But then as you go ahead and develop further and your cells mature, from birth onward, our bodies contain what we term adult stem cells. But you don't have to be 21 years of age to own an adult stem cell. Babies are born with adult stem cells in their bodies and tissues. Umbilical cord blood, after the baby's born, you cut the umbilical cord, and that blood inside that's left inside there still has adult stem cells. So there are lots of sources. And in point of fact, you don't have to kill the donor then to get those adult stem cells. One other point I want to make, just some, some sort of boring scientific definitions, but these are from the leading embryology textbook, the zygote. That's the single-celled embryo at conception. And here's one textbook that says it's the beginning of a new human being. It's an embryo. The de development of a human begins with fertilization. This is where life starts. That's a scientific fact. Now, ethically, whether you choose to give that little human life any rights, that's an ethical question, and I'll leave that to my distinguished colleague, Wesley Smith, to tell you more about that. But the biological fact is, that's a human being, a member of our species right there. Now with embryonic stem cells, the first mouse embryonic stem cells were successfully grown in culture in, 19, in 1981. So we're talking about 28 years of research, really, with embryonic stem cells. Human, it took a little bit longer, but they've been studying embryonic stem cells for that period of time. As we mentioned, 
you have to destroy this little embryo. You break it apart to take those cells out and put them in the dish, and that's what they're working with. That's what they're trying to get them to study and supposedly come up with these various treatments. But there are a lot of problems, and I apologize for the small print, but what I, as a scientist, do is go to the published scientific evidence. For a scientist, that's really the only evidence. Testimonials and stories and so on, one person tells another what they've done, that doesn't count in science. It has to be published in these scientific journals where other scientists have reviewed it. And if you look at that, you find there are lots of problems with embryonic stem cells. Difficult to establish and maintain. It's a very inefficient science. You destroy a lot of embryos to get one dish of cells. And usually about 10 or 15 embryos just to get one dish of cells, called a line. It's difficult to get what I call here a pure culture in the dish. And all I mean is if I've had that heart attack, I want you to give me heart cells. Well, there are zero cases. They've taken one dish of embryonic stem cells and changed it all into just heart cells or just nerve cells. You have to get a few cells out, and you might get, here's a heart cell, here's a liver cell. It's what we call a tumor in a dish. And in fact, those growing cells lead to one of the biggest problems, the tumor formation that you have as a potential with embryonic stem cells. Now, it's not the case that every little rat and mouse gets a tumor when you put embryonic stem cells in. But the usual rate is about 20%, and in some cases it does go to 100% in some experiments. Point of fact, often when they do these studies, they'll stop it early on before the tumors would form, and then they can say, well, there no tumors were formed in these mice from the embryonic stem cells. But if you leave them long enough, there's a real high chance that they will show up. You might have seen the story that came out yesterday, a young man who was treated with fetal stem cells, so not these very early stem cells, but later on took aborted fetal tissue, got some of those stem cells injected into his spine and into his brain. Four years later now, tumors were showing up, and they could identify them that they came from those fetal stem cells. Well, fetal stem cells are immature. And so there's a danger with immature cells. Well, embryonic stem cells are even more immature and harder to control. So questions about functional differentiation. Just mean, will they work? Does you know good to have a beating heart cell out here in the dish? It's got to beat with the other cells in my heart. Beat in rhythm, slow, slow down, speed up as necessary to keep my body running. They have real trouble getting these cells to work in the animal. Problems of immune or transplant rejection, genetic instability. Yeah, there are a few rather modest positive results that they've gotten with some of these embryonic stem cells in the rats and mice. But in most cases, it doesn't work very well. And in fact, there are no human beings who have yet been injected with embryonic stem cells. Now, there's an approval to start experiments this next summer, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. And there is this other problem, though. They're ethically contentious. In other words, you have to destroy a young human life to get these embryonic stem cells. I mentioned this approval of a trial. There's a company in my country called Geron. They've been working for years and telling everybody they're going to cure all these diseases with embryonic stem cells. And so just a few weeks ago, uh, maybe coincidentally, soon after President Obama was inaugurated, they were approved to start experiments with human patients who had had a spinal cord injury by injecting human embryonic stem cells into these patients. Now, the approval's been given. Supposedly, the experiments won't start until this next summer. But there was general celebration that they were moving ahead. But I want to look at some of the real details about these experiments with human patients. Now, these are spinal cord injured patients. They already know from the mouse experiments that the embryonic stem cells won't do anything for that kind of injury after the injury is a few weeks old. So they're targeting patients that are only going to be one to two weeks after their injury. They're starting this summer, that means those patients, future patients, are still walking around. They haven't had the injury yet. It's got to be a fresh injury, supposedly, for these cells to work. Let's think also about the mindset of those patients now. 
They've just had that injury. They've just been told by their doctor that they may never walk again. They're desperate. Their families are desperate. And someone's going to come in and offer them what might be a magic elixir that they might actually regain some movement and sensation. In a sense, at least to me, you're preying on desperate people at desperate times, emotionally. So there are a lot of concerns about that. There are concerns about potential tumors. They're going to have to follow these patients for the rest of their lives to be sure they don't form any tumors. It's interesting, in fact, some of the embryonic stem cell scientists have said they're moving too fast, they haven't shown it's safe, they haven't done this in large animals, it's just in rats. And in fact, even that information doesn't look all that good. So they've got even a lot of their colleagues worried. The other point that we need to make is they've been approved to start these experiments in the hope that maybe they might get a modest improvement and show that they're safe. It's already been shown with adult stem cells. There are actually groups in both Australia and Portugal who have treated patients, they've done the tests, and they've shown that not only are the adult stem cells safe, but they actually work. The patients actually regain some movement and sensation. Some patients are walking again with the aid of braces. Not a cure yet. There's still a lot of refinement to do. But it was working with these patients. And oh, by the way, in these kinds of injuries, the International Spinal, Spinal Cord Society says there usually is some spontaneous improvement in the first three months. So in this experiment with the embryonic, even if they got some improvement, it may not be due at all to the embryonic stem cells. But the Australian and the Portuguese group specifically chose patients for their trials that were at least six months to two years after the injury. No more chance for spontaneous improvement, but even in these older injuries, it worked and improved those patients. 